I am curious to know what pops into your mind when you hear the word treasure. Okay, think about that. Just, or don't think about it, just whatever pops in when you hear the word treasure. The correct answer, of course, is pirates, obviously. Maybe some of you guys had a holier answer or something. But I think of pirates. I think of a, a piece of paper with a big X on it to mark the spot where the treasure has been buried, like, you know, under the ground or in a cave, some type of hidden location. I think of a chest that like you can't even close the lid because it's overflowing with gold and silver and coins and necklaces and jewelry all spilling out. That's what I think of when I hear the word treasure. And I think that's what, uh, what a lot of the world thinks of when we hear the word treasure. I think by and large, the world looks at life itself as one big grand treasure hunt. We're looking all over the place for something hidden that we can find and then we we can achieve uh, contentment, happiness, security, fulfillment, you know, make our lives complete in some way. It's kind of, you know, pretty common way of looking at life, I think. So we've all got treasure maps that we're following, right? Are you still on your first one, your original treasure map? Or are you on, anybody on their 31st one? You know, you've cast aside some other ones that haven't quite worked out, that you haven't found where the X is yet. Well, in our, in our scripture reading today that we just had, uh, we're continuing that extended teaching that Jesus gives to us. He's talking about, you know, mater- the role of material possessions, money, stuff, stuff that we need, right, in this life. Uh, But then he's also talking about, you know, what's the dynamic between those things and then also between trusting in God to provide, not only for for this life, but for the life to come. And Jesus himself brings up treasure, okay? I don't know if he was thinking about pirates or not, but Jesus brings up treasure, and he says, he makes a bold statement that all of the earthly treasure— that we're running around trying to find, maybe some of us are wandering aimlessly trying to find it, he makes the bold statement that all this treasure is the wrong kind of treasure. He says, you can tear up your treasure maps. That's a paraphrase of what Jesus said. He says, those things are not the most important, not the most precious. And so Jesus is teaching us here that true treasure is not something hidden or buried that we have to devote our entire lives to finding. So that's not the treasure that you want. But he says the true treasure in heaven, it finds you. That's a weird kind of treasure, right? The treasure finds us and then ends up guiding you all of your life. So we're going to talk about this kind of treasure today. This is huge. This is huge. Now, there's a few different ways that we could describe what this heavenly treasure is like, how we could define it. I think the the simplest and easiest way to do that is by using the, the most common answer when you're sitting in a Sunday school class or down here at the children's message, okay, people? Uh, So then, keeping that in mind, what is the greatest treasure? Jesus, thank you, God. Man, you guys have been to a a few children's messages or Sunday school uh, classes before. It's Jesus. Jesus is the greatest treasure. Jesus and all that he brings, all that he gives to us. Okay. It's pretty simple so far, but I think we're, we're going to get off on some, on some good tangents here uh, as we go. Now, Jesus says, he, he has that line there at the end of this text that I, it is you have to just read it and reflect upon it for a long time. He says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And there are two things going on inside of me 
when I hear this, maybe it's the same as you, my first reaction is, that is so beautiful. Where my treasure is, there my heart will be also. It's, it's kind of poetic. Yes, that, that's very meaningful. But then on the other hand, I don't like it very much because it's kind of chilling when I hear it. It's a little bit ominous. It's a little bit convicting because then I think, uh-oh, where, what is my treasure? And consequently, where is my heart? And that's what I want us to, to ponder here today. What is the treasure that guides you? So in other words, where is your heart? Because Jesus makes this conversation very serious all of a sudden now. Where is your heart? And we have to, before we can really take in all of Jesus' words here, we have to, we have to recognize that at various points in our lives, now maybe our hearts have not been with him. They have been captured by other kinds of earthly treasure. Or, at the very least, we have to recognize that there is a, an epic battle raging inside of us every day because there's all kinds of other treasure that is competing in our lives for our very heart. All right. The stakes are kind of high now, uh, but, we, but we keep going. So I think one, one issue for us is that too often we think that this world, this life, is all there is. And I can, you know, some good reasons for that. This is all we can see, right? This is all we can comprehend. Now, we know as God's people, we know that there's a whole other life to, still to come. Jesus talks about eternity all the time. He's focused on that. But too often, even though we, we know that, you know, you can have knowledge of something, but it doesn't always affect how you think or how you act, how you behave. I think that's our problem sometimes. And we look around at people around us, maybe our peers, people who are very close to us, and they, they are also acting as if this is all there is. And so those treasure maps that we have, these earthly treasure maps, are all that there is. And we're, we're really good at following other people. You know, we're, hopefully we're following Jesus, uh, but sometimes we become disciples of other things, other treasure maps. And so, you know, I might be, I might see somebody else and, and see them, you know, following their own treasure map, you know, trying, wandering around. And instead of myself thinking, oh, I'm so glad I know where the true treasure is, I, I'm probably more likely to go over and say, hey, do you have an extra copy of that map? Looks like you're onto something. And then we just kind of do what everybody else is doing. It's very easy to fall into that. And then other treasure gets a hold of our heart. So where is your heart? What treasure is guiding you? You know, Jesus talks about all kinds of earthly things. And I think the, the danger, the danger at least for me, is when I start listing off all the things that are competing for my heart, I, I really downplay how much of a problem those things are, and especially how much of a, you know, maybe other people are susceptible to those things, but not me, of course, right? And so Jesus will list off things like, like material possessions and, um, you know, earthly status symbols or, or even just things like food and drink and, and travel and clothing and cars and house and, and all these things that, that are they're not inherently evil or anything. But I start to think, oh, come on. You know, if, you know, if I was sitting, I'd be like, come on, pastor. You think I, like, I really have a problem with those things? Come on. Those things, it's just like cliche to list off all of those things. I'm not really, they don't really pose a danger to me. But the thing is, they're, they're sneaky, and they do. And when so many people are consumed by them, we fall in and we start to seek for those treasures as well. And once one of these treasures gets a hold of your heart, um, they do not have a, a gentle grip on your heart. They have a very firm grip that becomes more constricting over time. And eventually, they'll squeeze the life right out of you. You will die, and you will have no treasure at all. 
because the treasure that you have chased after is just in this world and it doesn't last but it will it will kill you though and so Jesus calls us then today to recognize where our hearts are and therefore to repent of the times when they are far from him and Jesus works he works in us he he goes to find us and he begins to reorganize our lives and to relocate our hearts to be with him. Because he is, after all, the greatest treasure of all. He is guiding your life and my life. My, I don't know, this, this passage has really kind of hit me hard, you know, just when you're preparing, you know, you kind of get a hold of a, a text and you're just reading it and from different angles, and especially this last part, though, it's my, my, main, my main personal takeaway uh, is something like this. I think Jesus is trying to communicate to us, hey, guys, eternity is long, okay? This life right here, very short by comparison. Eternity, it's forever, right? It's very long, much longer. And Jesus is saying, you know, my child, I, I have taken care of your eternity. That's in the bank. It's secure, it's sure and certain. You don't have to worry about it. With the implication being, as, as we read here earlier in the gospel text, that you can uh, depend on having at least as good an existence here in this life as the birds and the flowers, okay? Jesus is saying, if I've taken care of your eternity, I'm going to take care of the here and now. I'm taking care of both. But especially for your comfort, it is the eternity. Jesus has done everything for us eternally. He, he seeks us out when our hearts are attracted to the earthly treasures that Jesus says that these things are going to rust. These things are going to decay. A thief might take them from you. They can't even stand up against moths, right? What a worthless kind of treasure. Moths can't even stand up against that. Jesus takes us away from those things, brings us to himself, and he says, let me show you the greatest treasures that the world has ever known. Let me show you my cross and my empty tomb. And let me show you this treasure chest that we can't even shut it because it's overflowing, not with gold or silver or jewelry, but with forgiveness of sins and a right relationship with God and with eternal life and with the Holy Spirit. You can't even shut it. This is all yours. Jesus is our treasure. Eternity is a long time, people. This life is short, and Jesus has our eternity covered. So then, what does that do for this life? How does that affect the way that we live in this life? And so the, the challenge for us today is to think about uh, what type of, you know, like what's one tangible, simple change that we might be able to make Knowing full well that Jesus has our eternity covered, what can change in the here and now? Because if it's true that my eternity is secure in the hands of Jesus, uh, it diminishes the importance of chasing after and gathering earthly treasure. It, it takes away a lot of the fear and the worry about day-to-day -day things when we have our eternity covered. And, and it frees us up to be more faithful to God, to be more generous, uh, to, and to even live more uncomfortably in some ways in this life. I, I want to read just the last few verses of our text again here. So Jesus has, he's talked about, you know, don't worry about today, tomorrow. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I, I don't know about you, I cannot help but read this and hear Jesus calling me to live differently here in this life. 
Jesus calling me to hold on more loosely to the earthly treasure so that I am more willing than to, to give it up because I know that Jesus has my eternity secure. No earthly treasure map will ever lead you to become less comfortable in this life. But Jesus has already told us, rip those things up, that they're, they're trash. Because Jesus, when we observe the life that Jesus led, Jesus was faithful to his father in his mission. He was generous with what he had. He did not have a lot of earthly treasure. He had time, very generous with it. He had mercy. He was very generous with that. And Jesus intentionally lived an uncomfortable life in many ways during his time on the earth. And so if, if, this, is the, if this is the guy who holds our heart, if this is the guy who is our treasure, if he's the one who's guiding us, I think our expectation will be that our lives will begin to look more like his life. And so as we wrap up here today, I want us to ponder this question. If your treasure became the true treasure in heaven, Jesus, what is one way that your life would look different in the next month? You're thinking, it's kind of arbitrary, Pastor, to just say a month, but you know, you got, you got to give people a time limit, a deadline or something, right, to act. I, I want you to, to really wrestle with this and, and ponder it, because it, this is one of those, like, if everything Jesus has said is true, then what? You know, what then? What are the implications? What can I stop chasing after that doesn't matter so much, and what can I start chasing after that might, have an in, uh, uh, that might have an eternal impact in the name of Jesus? And if whatever you come up with, guided by the Holy Spirit, if it makes you feel a little less certain, a little less comfortable, if it makes you feel like, ooh, this might be a little bit hard, I don't know, I have to say, uh, big deal, because we've got a long time in eternity, right, where we can be very comfortable and very at peace. Things will not be hard. This life is short, guys. So if we can make a difference, an eternal impact in the name of Jesus, let's do it. Because Jesus has that whole eternity thing handled for us. So my prayer is that Jesus, as our treasure, will guide our lives. He will guide your lives individually, that he will guide the lives of, of your families, that he will guide this congregation to be focused on him and the true treasure that he is. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for taking care of us in this life. Lord, we're so grateful for that. But thank you even more so for sending Jesus to be our treasure. Help us to depend fully on him for our eternity and help that same trust to spill over into our everyday lives and inform all that we do. In Jesus' name.